Sweet love to steal. Let me get my bag. Oh, did y'all hear me? I was whispering. I need my bag. Hi, y'all. I'm excited about today and everything up till now has not just been preliminaries. We're already here. We're here in the presence of God. Everything Tab just said, you're going to hear about Tab some more during this preach. I'm preaching about Tab today. Not really, but kind of really. Um, listen, the prophetic has handles. And when God is moving among his people, what happens to one affects the others. So she's sharing that testimony because it has a handle on it for you. Um, I'm going to talk to you today. You can go ahead and put up the first slide. Open hearts, open hands. This totally came from, I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but behind the, front, the, behind the scenes, we're friends. And so we text each other and call each other, especially me and the worship team. And Tab has been talking this open hand thing up because she really means it. She wanted to run in the streets and go, I've found the secret of life, which get the sermon from Revela the X Factor of Revelation. That's where that came from. That's what Watson and Crick did when they discovered the structure of DNA. They ran into a pub and said, I've discovered the secret of life. But Revelation makes you feel that way because you're living it. It's not just, oh, I found something scholarly I can share in a book. You're living it and it's changing your life. So Tab's been, been talking about open hands so much so, it's now a sermon title and it's about to be a series title in a couple of, in a couple of weeks. And I just want to declare to you that's church. It's not platform driven, it's people driven. We may happen to be standing on this platform, but you and we are living it together. And you have feedback into our lives, whether your name's on it or not. So open hands came from the Abbey, yeah. and it's affecting the Abbey. Um, I'm back to living on a prayer. Don't hold on to what you got. <laughs> open hands, right? Yeah. It's another sermon. I know I do some of them, can, but can I just say, and please hear it with humility, we've been having some great sermons around here. I mean, I've enjoyed them myself. Y'all, I get the pleasure of sitting there, like, leaning into what God wants to say, and I'm amazed at him. So I hope today you just can plug right in, and, uh, and this should be no exception. We are going to talk about generosity that transforms. Now, my son, Joe Brownback, just experienced some transforming generosity because he, as a graduate, where is Joe right now? Is he in here? He's in the nursery. Oh, he is have, practicing transformational generosity. <laughs> So I'm going to tell, y'all can all hug him. He graduated from TCU, but as y'all know, our youngest son, Noel, is a current mechanical engineering student at the University of Texas Little School in Austin. Uh, thank you for that. And Joe was so cute just now. Yesterday, he and Alyssa drove to Austin, and they paid for three tickets to take Noel to his only second in two years UT football game. And he, Joe was so cute just now. He said, he said TCU's uh, stadium sit, seats 50,000. I didn't realize UT seats 150,000. <laughs> That's like a sea of orange, you know. I just want to declare TCU lost, and he hosted that game for his little brother to gloat. <laughs> and if you have siblings, nobody likes that. And Noel was wearing so much burnt orange in the photo. It's on Facebook. I just want to say that was some generosity that cost Joe Brown back a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. But we're not going to talk about, you know what? Generosity really won't cost you more than it pays you if we can use the word pays. And so today we're going to talk about generosity that transforms. And it has nothing to do with a football team, though Larry Lavelle would say it might have to do with the Cowboys a little. Am I good? It's a lot. It's a lot. Amber says a lot. Okay. Transformation is a kingdom word. We're not just informed or conformed, though we are. We are transformed. What does that mean? It means the inform and conform comes from the inside out, not from a mold put on us from the outside. There's a term going around in pop culture called sea change. Have you heard of it? To me, that describes what God wants to do in every situation. He wants the very thing you're swimming in to be transformed. You may not immediately see your circumstance change, but the sea around you gets different. God brings sea change. It means that things can change on a dime. 
and all of, you know what the biggest sea change is? You know where the biggest sea change happens? It's right here in this noggin. There's a sea up here, a sea of thought, and you're living off that, and God brings sea change. So God is a God of transformation, and he can do it all the kinds of ways, as Tab said, he multitasks. So the Lord, I heard the Lord say this, and my whole goal today, in some way all over this platform and all over your heads, is to release this word I heard. I heard the Lord say he wants to release a season of prophetic giving in the abbey. So you see that person's hands open with something of heaven. We're going to say it might have been a new age photo, but we're using it for heaven. <clears throat> we can do that. Is that person giving or receiving? Both. Both. The answer is yes. You can't tell from that picture if that dose of heaven just came into his or her hands or if they're doling it out. Can I tell you that's the way to live? Yeah. You don't hold on to it. You don't hoard it because it's a channel. You are a channel where the giving flows through you. And I don't just mean money. Please, please know this is all the kinds of giving. That'll be clear before this day is over. Here that prophecy is in scripture. I believe this is the word of the Lord to the Abbey. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. This is God's desire to release prophetic giving in the Abbey. Perfectly stated right in the Bible. But since you... Excel, X factor, Excel. In every, anybody aware of the theme? Yes, okay. So we jump on every word with an X in it. We do. But since you excel in everything, and isn't this true of the Abbey? We excel in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness. Aren't we authentic and real? It's awesome. And in the love we have kindled in you. It's one of the biggest things people say about the Abbey. I feel loved, I feel like home. See to it that you also excel in this grace of giving. Wow. Can you hear God's heart in that? The word excel means go beyond expected measure. Super abound, I love this, in both quality and quantity. It's not just more, it's more heart. It's more of your life. Grace you know what grace is, but sometimes it's good to redefine it. God freely extending himself to people, even leaning towards them for the purpose of sharing his resources. First of all, redemption, along with that, whatever else, because he has it all. He's good. He's just good. But the problem with the statement I just made is this word prophecy, because we often don't know what we mean by Bible words. We don't. Uh, it's a spirit word, the word prophecy, and we try to define it by our experience. So in some churches, prophecy is simply end times things, right? The last book of the Bible, etc. It is that, but that's not all it is. And in some churches, it's a manifestation of the spirit where somebody with a microphone says, you there, God says this to you, or this group, or this church. It is that, but it's more. There's a kingdom definition that includes all of that and then some. And I want to say it this way. Prophecy is expressing the thoughts of God along with the heart of God. Prophecy is expressing the thoughts of God along with the heart of God. A friend of mine once told me he was trained in a prophetic school. And they use this scripture. And there's a part of it on there. I'm going to read you the whole scripture. Psalm 139, 17 and 18 says... How deep are your thoughts, and many translations say toward me, O oh God. How great is their number. God has a lot of thoughts toward you. Were I to count them, they would number more than the sand. So what he said is how he was taught to prophesy is you just pray and say, Lord, would you reveal one of your thoughts right now about this person or about this situation? So I said... Prophecy is a way of living open to God's thoughts in every situation. And for my friend Donna Summers, who just adores the beach, I was thinking if it's like the grains of sand, living in a prophetic way is just taking a walk on God's beach. And you just gather up the wisdom that's there and share it appropriately, said a church leader who wasn't born yesterday. So, just before we move forward, I'm going to give you one slide, a clarifying 
the prophetic, because that needs to be done in church, in the charismatic church, to be clear about the prophetic operating in church. Here's a few things. Number one, prophetic statements don't just foretell, they also foretell. Doesn't have to have future in it. How many know you now is determining your future? <laughs> so if I speak to your now, I've got your future. Number two, prophecy in the church is not telling someone what they should do. It's not. It's not. It never is. It's not. It never will be. It's not. It's not. And if that has been done to you, and I'm not kidding. You know how preachers say, if that's been done to you, come down here and let's pray for you. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Please, we'll pray and break that off of you. Prophecy has been used for manipulation and control. It's wrong. It's flesh getting involved. We need to forgive the people that did it, but let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater, as we might be tempted if that's been done to you. And the reason that that's been done is number three. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 32 says, The spirit of prophets are subject to prophets, to them. In other words, the gift of prophecy in you is subject to your will and also subject to your packaging. So it comes through you. If I stood up here and spoke in, I'm trying to think of some culture I'm not. What culture am I not? I'm not very cowboy, am I? So if I tried to prophesy like somebody that had been on the rodeo, like Scott Berger would, maybe. Is that all right? Can I use you as a cowboy? Okay, all right, see, see. If I tried, in fact, if I were to try to prophesy using any roping or riding analogy, I would have called Scott and Renee before I did it because I know coming through me, that's going to get messed up. Because it, it is a dark art to me when I watch rodeo. I'm like, I don't know how you did that. <laughs> it's a dark art to Joe too, but that's another story. Joe got kicked in the face by a bull the one time he tried to bull ride. That was that joke right there. He has a scar. No, it's right here. Anyway, what, what am I saying? I'm trying to say, y'all, God's perfect, but we're not. So the best of the prophetic still flows through a person. So if it upsets you or feels like the devil, you don't need to receive that part. Just put it on the shelf because God knows how to speak to you like you. So obviously... If you get a word from me, it might be laced with science. But that's, that's just the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And by the way, the context of that is about taking turns. If you read the whole context of that scripture, he was, Paul was exhorting them, you, you don't have to just blurt it out when you get it. Right. Y'all are looking at me shocked. But you know what? People were people in the Bible. And God knows he's a God of order. And so he knows how to mix. We don't know how to mix heaven and earth with earth very quickly and well, but he does. And if we just follow him, we know how to behave and not be wild cards. Number four, there are those who are prophetic, but everyone can flow in it. Right. We are a prophetic people because Christ is in you and he's all the prophetic. Right. Revelations 19.10 says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And then number five, and this is where we're landing today, and we're going to stay there a while. Prophetic expressions are not limited to words. The painters in the corner of this auditorium, that one right there, Kay Rollins, has painted prophetically and always does. She's painting from a place of expressing God's heart, God's thoughts, along with his heart. So here's a little graphic, because why not have one if you can? Open heart open hands, and I'm adding a third element in that cone of combination, and that is open hearing. If this channel of hearing God is open, then open heart and open hands is not just sentiment. It is empowered and fueled by heaven, and I call this whole life Christianity, whole life Christianity, as if there were any other kind. There is not, but the church has made other kinds, so we need to remind the church that it's whole life, made in the image of a generous God. So we would be generous. We would be open. Even if you're given a smile, that's an act of generosity that could change the world. 1 Thessalonians 5.20, in a few translations, simply says, despise not prophesyings. Do not scoff at prophecies, which we get tempted sometimes. Have you ever, if you've been around church a long time and you hear somebody go, your life's going to be amazing and maybe you've lived a few things that didn't feel amazing, you're tempted to think, oh, prove that. 
I'm just being real with you. But the Lord's saying, don't scoff at his word coming into your life, even if it presents a totally contrasting picture to what you're currently living. Do not, I like this last one, do not despise inspired messages. Now, I think I'm in the right place today because the Abbey's a place, that's our hearts. The Greek, prophetia, the word actually means communicate, reveal truth, make clear in the moment what has been revealed but not yet announced. Prophecy is making clear in the moment what has been revealed but is not yet announced. That's why one of our good friends often says, prophecy is just stating the obvious. You don't know how many times I've received a prophetic word and I think, that is obvious. And I stand up and declare it and it wasn't necessarily obvious. It was I was seeing. I was, I was getting to use God's eyes and it was obvious to God's eyes. But when I said it, people went, oh, and I thought, prophecy really is just stating the obvious. It's not that it's this new thing no one's ever heard. It's the thing for the moment that people are missing. It's all back to the cross. Everything prophesied is available to you because of the cross. But you're not currently thinking about it. And so the Lord comes, and look at the second part of this, cause to shine before someone's eyes. The words of the prophetic, the actions of the prophetic cause something to shine before your eyes. Or set forth so as to produce an epiphany. So, you know, it's trendy today to use the word epiphany. I think I've had an epiphany, you know. I think Oprah uses it. Aha moments, you know. But there's one thing to realize something. There's another thing to have something reveal where the curtains pull back on heaven and truth. There's nothing wrong with realizing things. You should live a life realizing things. But there's an element of power that gets on it when God's behind it, and that's the prophetic. Colossians 2, 2 and 3 talks about this, what kind of epiphany. I want to tell you, this is the epiphany we're after. This is the curtain pulling back. It says, so that they might have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God in case you have any doubt, that's namely Christ. And look at this. <clears throat> in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom or knowledge. What in the world do you need to see or know that's not in Christ? Whatever it is in your situation or your heart or your, some of us, like me, we're like deep and we're complex. Lord, I need to understand myself. It's in Christ. It's not in me. It's not in a magazine quiz. It's not in a Facebook quiz. It's in Christ. So all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, even about my complex wiring, I'm not kidding. He meets me there. He meets me there. And I have a real epiphany, not just a judgment I've made about myself. So the word hidden is apocrypto, which is the root word of cryptography, which is code. So I say it's hidden. It's written to be decoded in Christ. It's stored up to be later found like treasure and it says in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and that is thesaurus do we have any word people here that have a thesaurus in the book form yes now they're online I understand that it's a storehouse of if you love words it's a storehouse of precious things so it's a receptacle for valuables what I'm trying to say to you is all the treasures in him and the prophetic is revealing him. Not generic, go to heaven one day him, that's awesome, but specific him. Speaking into your situation, into what you're going through, into what do I do with this life I've been given in this circumstance that's assaulted me. Okay, now I said I was gonna talk about tab. Before I put this slide up there, I just wanna repeat, prophecy has handles. So the reason it has handles is because all of it came to us through Christ. So the cross is always our place where you never have to sit. You know, there's prophetic jealousy. Charismatics have done all these things. You know, you sit and hear somebody else get a word and you're like, have to go pray through because you didn't get it. Right? <laughs> anybody? Anybody ever had those feelings? Listen, if you haven't, stick around. We'll give them to you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a sibling thing. I'm an only child. I don't even understand having a brother or sister get blessed because I never was taught to understand it. Just either I got it or I didn't. That's all I knew. I didn't know what brothers and sisters getting it. But we can do that. We can get prophetically jealous. But we never have to because prophecy has handles. So in this next word, God chose tab, 
uh, in 2006 to nurture and carry this word, and I asked her permission. I said, Tab, will you share this word with the whole Abbey? Because I, I feel the Lord saying it over the whole Abbey. But then I had her, because she'd been talking about open hands. So what's she going to say? Like, could you imagine she went, no, I don't feel that the Abbey can have that word. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, y'all, that's funny. That's funny. Thank you. That's funny. I thought so. Didn't you think so? The, Wayne Drain prophesied over Tab in 2006, and the actual, she sent me a copy of the actual statement, and it said, a prophetic edge will be a part of everything you do. Now, Tab and I, because we're friends, oh, that's been some years. How many years is that? Um, 12 years. Oh, 12 years. Something about that number. Anyway, the way that I kept quoting it back to her, and then she started quoting it back to me, uh, everything you do will be laced with the prophetic. That's how I heard it. I don't know if that came from 60s and drugs. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know where it came from. We'll think of a shoe. But I just had the sense of, of everything you do being, well, I'm almost going to go there, like spiked with the prophetic. Like you're going to think you're just picking worship songs. Lo and behold, you pick the song that's going to set somebody free. You're going to think you're just putting on clothes, but lo and behold, the t-shirt you wore is going to start a conversation in the coffee shop that's going to lead to something. In other words, that's the Abbey, y'all. It always has been, and I think it's no accident she, she grew up here. She went away for a while to college and went to other churches, and she came back and went, I have just realized I don't know anything about any church but the Abbey. Like, that's kind of what she experienced. She carried that word, but today there's a real transference of that word. This is us. <laughs> Good show. <laughs> don't hate on the crockpots. Good show. Uh, <laughs> By the way, where is Angela Buck? Is she still here? Where are you, Angela? There you are. It's hard to see. Uh, I forgot to call out this grain of sand. I was standing there. Angela was standing right here playing guitar. And, I, and I, this is how the prophetic works. I looked up there and I thought, man, I love the way Angela anchors a situation. How she's just back there strong on the guitar. There's like a presence she carries as she just anchors the stage. And I'm just sitting there musing in my own head. But this is how things are laced with the prophetic. All of a sudden, the Lord said, tell Angela, you're an anchor to the presence of God in situations without saying a word. Every situation. Every situation. That's how it's laced with the prophetic. Now, see, I didn't have to even call her down the front. I didn't have to go, oh. Nobody had to shake or get weird or shift. You can be so normal and flow in the prophetic. That is so, that is so entertainingly wonderful. So, Tab is the Abby today. She's open-handed. Everybody, I don't know, throw money at her. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> not coins. Do not throw coins at her. Okay, so what am I saying to you? I'm saying this. God's love is information rich. It's not just a generic hug that you only feel, and then we'll go think later. God's love is information rich. The prophetic in my world is when presence manifests as information beyond what the carnal eye can see. God is hugging you, and right in the middle of that hug, something gets clear. You just experience the prophetic. Yeah. You are worshiping him. You're lost in worship, and all of a sudden, you start seeing a video inside you of how something's going to work out. You just got a prophetic word. <laughs> you just got one, and you just got one, and you just got one. <laughs> uh, scriptures are like children. You can't have a favorite. But recently, when I was asked by Naomi Spradlin to name a favorite scripture, out popped this. I do not know why this scripture is not quoted more. I personally am decided I'm going to get myself a t-shirt with this scripture because it defines my life. 1 Corinthians 2.15, the spiritual person, however, can evaluate everything, yet he himself cannot be evaluated by anyone what does that mean? That means in the spirit, in those riches in Christ, you have insight into everything. Science, art, media, anything. Ugh, you could be annoying. But no, you won't be because of the love of God. Yeah. You have insights in all kinds of the mountains of this world. And yet nobody can pin you down. Yeah. Nobody can figure you out. Listen, I want to walk through a room and leave more questions than I do answers. 
I want to because I think the, the kingdom has been reduced to pat answers and God's wanting to excite and awaken some questioners in this day. So what you need to do is learn to live hearing. Thank you. I was hoping somebody would love that dog. You know why they do that? Because it's the same thing as if you're hard of hearing and you cup your hand. You're actually creating a cone for the sound waves to funnel into. And so dogs instinctively, they're trying to tune in to where that sound's coming from. Scientists also believe their vision plays a role in it. Isn't that interesting? So if you hear, you know how they hear sounds we don't hear? Dog whistles. Okay. You become like this as a prophetic individual, and I'm talking about all of you. You start going, you know, I'm just watching Angela play guitar, and then all of a sudden I go, oh. oh. I'm not as cute as that dog when I do it. It's on the inside. It's on the inside. And our dog does that when we have food out. It's like the dog is tuning into the sound of the food, even when there is no sound. But that's the way you become. You're living your life, doing your thing, going about your day, but there, you are willing to do that. You can do it with song lyrics in the car. You can do it with what people say. You can have all kinds of moments where you've tuned in. Isn't that amazing? I'm just amazed. Now, <clears throat> I, I realize, too, this is not prophetic. This is me kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the prophetic, you may think I'm really saying this from God. But this is my way of introducing a science slide, is that I usually say, I know a lot of you woke up this morning and thought, how does AM and FM radio work? Yeah. <laughs> all I needed was one. All I needed. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry Cotsman. That was Jerry Cotsman on the, on the move forward. Listen, this is how it works. Radio and also wireless, it's a little different, but it's the same thing. They both work by using what's called a carrier wave for the signal wave that we actually hear. So with radio, if we just heard the sound, the antenna to receive it would be ginormous is the word the blogger used to describe it. In other words, we couldn't have that antenna. So to make the antenna small enough for humans to use, they modulate AM is amplitude modulation, FM is frequency modulation. They modulate that carrier wave. What do they do? They lace it with signal, basically. I'm taking a liberty there, but it's the truth. The carrier wave makes no sound. The signal is the sound, but the carrier wave gets it to the receiver. God's love is the carrier wave. God's love is the wave that gets the information from heaven to you. But listen, there is all kinds of information on that wave being carried to you. When he hugs you, you don't have to get information out of it. But if you need information, you can get information out of it. Spiritual information. His love is information rich. God's love is a carrier wave for so much spiritual information. So every time he's hugging you, loving you, when you're feeling his love, or when you're not feeling it, you're just choosing to receive it by faith. No, it is laced with all kinds of information. And don't despair if you can't decipher it right at that moment. Just know it's even going into your spirit to be stored, to work in you. I'm telling you, this. I feel a, I feel a sense of the presence of God even as I'm saying this, that some of you right now are starting to tune in. It's not just, okay, God, this is how I used to think. I thought, okay, God hugged me. Okay, thank you. Now we got that done. Now let's go over here and get serious about what does your word say about so-and-so situation? Anybody? Right? And as I've walked for years, I've realized when I'd come over here, he was wanting to hug me. He's like, don't study. I just want to hug you. But then I would come over here and I'd be like just getting lost in him. And all of a sudden he'd start talking. Like he's like praying, you know that thing you're dealing with? Here's what's going on. I'd be like, okay, yeah, but we're supposed to be hugging right now. But <laughs> what was he doing? He was mixing it all up inside me and showing you don't have to define our relationship that way. Let's hang out. And in my love, my love is a carrier wave for all the things you need. Just keep the love flowing and you'll get there. Okay, here is quickly an Old Testament example of prophetic giving. I'm so excited about this. Get, prophetic giving is laced with information. In Exodus 30:18, they're building the tabernacle in the wilderness and they're given instructions. And it says, make a bronze basin, and it's pictured here with the priest, for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. And verses 19 and 20 tell us 
that Aaron and his sons, who were the priests, are supposed to wash their hands and feet in it before they approach the altar. And the scripture says, so they will not die. I just find that funny. I don't know why I find that funny. It's kind of like, I, I just feel like, you know, so you won't die. <laughs> wash. Because, yeah, it's just kind of like, did I add you'll die if you don't? Um, I don't know. I just find that funny. So you see that this is a big deal. Uh, it is life dependent, you know, this is a big deal. Here's this next scripture that I'm going to put up here is Exodus 38.8. So, you know, they built all the tabernacle according to specific instructions. But look at this. They made the bronze basin and its bronze stand, what I just showed you, from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. This is one of only two places in the whole Old Testament where a specific gift is mentioned. Otherwise, it's just random offerings that were gathered up. So, can you see, does that awaken your imagination? Mirrors of women were melted down to form this high priestly washing place. Okay? Here's multiple signals on that carrier wave of giving. Number one, creative resourcing is possible. Number two, these mirrors came from the plunder of Egypt. The Hebrew, got, the Hebrew women got them. The plunder of Egypt, whole preaching itself. God told them before they were leaving Egypt to go knock on the Egyptians' doors and say, give me stuff. Yeah. And the Egyptians were so convinced they needed them out of there, they gave them stuff. And these were expensive hand mirrors that the Egyptian woman gave them. Do you think those women wanted to let go of those in the natural Probably not. They saw a bigger cause for this plunder to be used. Then number three, this is inclusiveness prophesied. Sons and daughters will prophesy. That's Acts 2.17, quoting Joel 2.28. And that was a day when and daughters wasn't actually happening a lot. But God included them specifically in the building of the tabernacle. I think that's a big deal. Even more, the message that's laced in there, trade in your identity, your mirror, your mirror life handed you, your natural appearance, for a new washed one, a new reflection. And that high priest, you saw him washing, he saw a reflection in that water. That prophesies the new covenant, number five. There's a new covenant coming that will affect your deepest notions of who you are. I'm going to shift into high gear and go fast now. But are you with me that God can layer multiple, multiple messages in prophetic acts, prophetic words, prophetic giving? Look at this. God multitasks in his creative generosity. That butterfly is beautiful. It also mimics eyes to keep predators away. And the white part of that actually in the sun makes a reflection just like an eye reflecting the sun. It's an incredible multitasking of our generous father in his ultimate creativity. My goodness, let your eyes be open on the inside right now. Here's one. You know the scripture, Psalm 19, 1 and 2 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. You know the signs of the zodiac astrology. What if instead of being pagan attempts at prop, uh, predicting the future. What if God, now think of it, they're not actually in the sky. They, well, they are, but they're only a thing because of where we stand on earth. Like if you're in space, you don't see a lion or a water bearer or any of those things. What if every one of those, and I have a book that this guy had this thesis in 1958 or something. I don't care if you believe it or not. I just know God. And he, it says day after day, the skies declare his glory. And this guy goes through every sign of the zodiac and says, why didn't that point to Jesus? Leo, the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Aquarius, the water bearer. Man, this is amazing. Aquarius was the poured out water. And guess what that's poured out on? Pisces, the fish, the body of Christ. Come on, I'm not going to go through all of them. But what if the enemy just took them over here and said, dark arts. But God, in fact, painted. The I didn't know that was funny. Was that funny? Oh, 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 this is new. My impression of evil is funny. That, that is news to my life. 
Thank you. I didn't see that coming. It's rare that I don't anymore. Okay. All right. So what am I saying? Do you get this? God might have other plans for things than men. And God may be communicating more than we dream. So can you see his giving is transformational. Therefore, our giving is transformational. It changes us. It changes the circumstance. It changes the world. We don't even know what all it's changing, but he's giving transformationally. And the repercussions go on throughout the universe. You know, there's radio waves still floating through the universe, carrying signals from the old days. It's incredible. How much more is that true with God's giving? This is the internet. Why do I show you that? Because this is the reason that it's transformational. It's because it's a kingdom of connections. In my notes, my comment on that is, the internet's got nothing on the body of Christ. We are connected. We are relational. This is us. That is all over the place today. This is us. We are more connected than the internet. That's why giving is transformational. It cannot affect just the person you gave it to. It affects the whole connection. Amazing. Which is like, you knew it was coming, chaos theory. (laughs) Or the butterfly effect. At least I found a different picture for it. For those of you that have been around a while, it's a new picture. And if you don't know what that is, it's the theory, which is mathematically sound. It's just a cute way of saying it. The flapping of a butterfly wing in China can set off a tornado in Texas. That's actually true because it's passed through layers and layers of relational atmospheres, and that's actually true, proven on computer simulations. So the way we want to say that is your tiniest acts of giving can set off a storm of blessing. That's our chaos. Just because someone here wants to know it, the scientific name of chaos is And listen to this, sensitive dependence on initial conditions. So Tab and Dom are in a period of their life right now that they think, I need some big storms. But the Lord is showing them this system over your life is sensitively dependent on the little things you're doing right now. Oh, isn't that the seed? Like the Bible's all about the seed. Chaos theory is nothing more than a seed. So we miss it because we go looking for big changes to make when we're desperate. And God's going, sow a smile. And I'll tell you what he told me to do today in just a second. In fact, here it comes. Okay. Now, the Lord told me to demonstrate today. I'm going to say, first of all, God does his best work seemingly ex nihilo. I said this about Larry and Amber's testimony. You know, when he stood up here and he, he said, God built all this out of nothing. It was almost nothing because there were some invisible things. So he meant nothing on earth, nothing you could see. Can I say God's building in you? He's hovering over Tab and Dom. He's building something almost out of nothing, but that tiny flapping of the butterfly wing is not nothing. So I'm going to demonstrate here as we bring it to a close. The first thing I'm going to demonstrate, this is why Larry and Amber had to be here today. So, Larry and Amber, we only, met them, we only met at the Abbey since they've been coming. They know how to use Facebook, so we're close now. <laughs> and um, they got a word for me, and Amber has graphic design skills. She said that last week, and she made this breathtaking graphic, and this word wasn't just, we like you, we like you, girl. It wasn't just that. It was like... From, I mean, I'll take that. It's better than the alternative. But, uh, but it was like from the heart of God. And uh, little did I know, they made it into this shadow box. This is the word. I'm not going to read it to you right now because I'm fixing to read you something else. But every little piece of this, and they told me later, this key says dream. And they told me later, little by little, they, they didn't know what they put in there, what it meant until I would say something and they'd go, oh, that's what that meant. Like they just obeyed. Look at that, y'all. I'm telling you, if I had to make this, I would have been in a counselor's office going, help me, oh God. (laughs) I mean, it's a work of art, but here's the deal. Here's what happened. They took a picture of this and sent it to me on Facebook. But how many of you know, sometimes when something pops up on your phone, on Facebook, it looks a little bitty. And so I spent weeks 
I saw it, but I didn't see it, and I didn't go back and read it because a bunch of y'all had Facebooked me in that period, right? I mean, when you're living off your phone and you're 50-something, you know. So they went weeks not knowing if I even liked it. And listen, I'm just going to be real on their behalf because I know them this well now. When you give and you don't know if somebody received it, it ain't fun. I would have been the same way. I would have been at home going, oh. <laughs> it's kind of like after we preach, Paul and I get in the car sometimes. We go, was that okay? Yeah. <laughs> that okay. <laughs> Last week he was up in here preaching on hard root beer, and I turned to Dom, and I said, he gets away with so much more than I get away with. But anyway, because <laughs> everybody likes him, like I said at the wedding. So in the end of the day, though, here's the deal. I miss the signal, you know? This was a carrier wave with signal, and I missed the signal. So my friend Donna called me and said, she didn't say it in these words, but she basically said, uh, you missed a signal. And I went back and found it, and I'm not kidding. I mean, it is like, it is like, oh, like, I, okay, instead of trying to tell you what this meant to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay it forward. So there's someone here today that this is so cool to me, and if any of you step on this, your life is... <laughs> I'm, will you help me pack that up at the end? Okay, so I'm got, this is what the Lord told me to do this, and I really am closing, but I promise this is, um, okay, I'm going to pay it forward. I want to demonstrate prophetic giving that's beyond just I got a microphone and I thought of this right now because that's legit. That's what happened with Angela. But Pauline Spradlin, would you come stand right here? I made her... Just stand right there. And you can look at me, and I'm going to deliver this to you. You can stand on that line so I can see your eyes real good, and then look at me. Everybody, this is Pauline Spradlin. I made her trade working with the kids today for this, and she had no idea why she was in there. Nobody told her, did you? Okay, so she's probably been sitting there going, why am I here? Because she's very loyal and she would have done the kids. Okay, I don't know how this started, but years ago I noticed uh, when someone would graduate from high school in our church, I would write them a poem and they were laced with the prophetic. And I haven't done it in a long time because well, there's a lot of y'all graduating. And I got, I just got busier. And uh, today, here it is. This is for you, Pauline. And I feel it so deeply that... Um, God's going to gather me to be able to read it to you. So listen in and remember, prophecy has handles. A God of variety and a world that reflects the colors of heaven that on earth project. He created a vista of his manifold essence in the people he made to dwell in his presence. There are people who stand out for their audible boldness and people who flow quietly, <laughs> ministering wholeness, that was funny because she looked over at the Spradlin section just then. <laughs> there are people who stand out for their audible boldness and people who flow quietly ministering wholeness. There are those who light up a room with their God-given charm and those whose gentle love ministered can completely disarm. In the full array spectrum of color and personality, it's easy to get caught between who you are and who you want to be. But the message of redemption so free and so strong is that you were made to be exactly who you have been all along. The cross removes hindrance and sets gifting free, releasing you, his life now within, to be exactly who you be. But in the world of loud voices and characters abounding... You might not have celebrated the frequency you are sounding. You're a wavelength of wisdom, a heart of pure love. You're a well of provision that flows from above. Your light blazes gloriously through detailed acts of grace, handcrafted by you to bring joy to each face. But let no man think your quiet demeanor indicates weakness in any endeavor. There's fire in your bones to make Jesus shine through a new vintage poured out your heavenly wine. So if anyone walks by you and fails to take in the spirit Spiritual riches that are carried within, their loss will be like bypassing Moses' burning bush. How different all history had he not taken that deeper look. You're a sight and a sound that's well worth the listen from whom the riches of God's kingdom glisten. And people who hear you and notice and see will be so glad they did for their own destiny. 
Just know your first audience will never be others, for no words can express the joy of your father. It is first before him that you burn with this passion, then to others you're released in destiny-altering fashion. you it shocked me when I saw this I've been carrying that in my heart for ah weeks weeks and then when I got it framed the Lord said parent prophecy really does handles have handles Janelle Montgomery would you come stand here I didn't ask Pauline if she would share her poem but we're preaching on open-handed living so (laughs) same poem And look, look at that. Amen. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Listen, I didn't even see that. I'm just following the Holy Spirit. And I was like, you know, in natural, you think, I can't give Pauline's poem to Janelle. And the Lord said, you said prophecy had handles. And I really felt like that was a prophetic demonstration to heal every time you've ever sat there and thought, oh, they're getting recognized, but what about me? And you just don't know if you're authorized to take it, right? And the Lord just said, I see you. I see you. If you've ever heard my heart prophesied to someone that you thought, what about me? Go back and reconsider that and let him speak to you. Prophecy really does has handles because it's all purchased by the cross. So here I'll close with this is, this is it. Well, this is the end. Worship team, you can come. Acts 3, 6. This is the story of the lame man at the gate. Beautiful. He was lame since birth. If you were raised in church, you might have heard walking and leaping and praising God. Anybody know that song? He, he got healed. And the famous line in Acts 3, 6 that was spoken to him As Peter passed by, he saw him begging, and he was asking them for alms. He was begging for money, and Peter said, silver and gold have I none. This translation says, I have no silver and gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Do you realize he healed his inability to get silver and gold? The man was a beggar. He had no way of income. Peter reached beyond his immediate need into his bigger need. Many scholars believe, and I agree, that he wasn't saying, I'm I'm just a poor apostle, I have no silver and gold. It was the equivalent of him saying, I don't have cash on me. Have you ever said that? In this moment, he was saying, I don't have cash on me, but what I am carrying is readily available. Can I say it this pedestrianly? It's, it's like I'm an ATM for the presence. You know, I don't have cash on me, but what I do have is better. And I'm going to heal your inability to produce. So I want to offer you today a life of prophetic giving. I want to offer you a life, not of people ever telling you what to do, but of God himself inspiring an open-handed life. In the weeks to come, we're going to look a lot at miracles of abundance that Jesus did. I'm really excited about this series. We've got some really exciting things coming up next week in terms of the vision of our church. But right now in this moment, I just sense that the Lord wants to heal some hearts that have felt overlooked. Some hearts that have felt that they haven't heard from God. And the, the shift today in the atmosphere is that you move from thinking God doesn't speak often to realizing the whole universe is laced with his communication for you personally. You're not selfish to want to hear his voice straight to you. That's normal for a child. What child doesn't want to hear their father's voice? It never gets old hearing your daddy's voice. I told you about getting lost in worship and he would suddenly start talking to me. Do you know if I'm totally transparent before you, he many times he would start talking to me about me because he knew 
I needed that fathering. I needed him to reflect who I was. I can't tell you how amazingly precious those times have been. Lost in the presence of God when he'd say, Perry, and it's my delight that I made you this way. And you know what, he, what happened when he'd do that? I would stop comparing myself to other people who he made a different way. Because it no longer mattered if I had that validation from the Father. That's how Pauline's poem ended for a reason. Because that's how the Father does us. When you know he likes you, because he made you the way you are, then comparisons cease. Otherwise, if you sit around and psychologically try to deal with your head and educate yourself not to compare, you're just fighting. You're like running on a treadmill. Don't compare, don't compare. What are they doing? <laughs> so God himself is among us today. The presence has been here all day. So let's just tune in one last time before we go. Can we just be like that dog and just turn our ear to heaven? Do you remember that song? It started out, turn your ear to heaven. You don't have to weep and cry. You don't have to beg at all. You don't even have to try super hard. Just turn your ear to heaven. Father, I thank you that throughout this place, right now, people are hearing your voice. Maybe some of them in ways they've never heard it. Lord, maybe for some people here, they always expected if they heard the voice of God, it would be this booming thing. But right now, they're realizing it sounds a lot like a whisper on the inside of them or a thought or an image. God's painting on the canvas of your mind and your heart. And Lord, if there's anybody here who the circumstances of life and hurts have boxed in and they really hear us talking about open hands but they just haven't had the grace to let go I pray right now that Lord you do what only you can do and you begin to communicate open handedness I thank you Father that you're working I just see him working on hearts expanding hearts to excel, to excel. There's, a, there's an old song that says, I am loved, you are loved, I can risk loving you. And the Lord's working that in people right now. It's, it's a risk to love. And some of you are justified in being a little guarded in the natural. But we serve a God who knows how to bring Pauline's front and center and honor and recognize them. That's not just for Pauline. She'd be the first to say it. That's for everyone here. I just sense in the room a lot of you. I'm thinking of Steve Stutzman right now, and I just sense the Lord just saying, Steve, I, I want to honor you. I want to honor the way you've cared for people, the way you've done more than a job. You've lived a life. God wants to honor you for years of keeping your heart tender when it could have been hard. That's a big deal, man, for anybody. How much more for your line of work? It's a big deal. God wants to honor you. All of you who've given and given again, given when you hurt. Do you know you serve a God who actually wants to honor you? We should honor him, we think, and we should. But he's so generous. He wants to honor you for all your faithfulness. Just be astounded at that right now. He honors you. Abbey Church, your life will be laced with the prophetic. It will pop up when you least expect it. It will pop up in places you don't think it can will always open hands and open hearts and it will always open hearing amen Paul why don't you come and dismiss us today hallelujah let's stand up together would you just hold your hands open out in front of you 
in a position of both receiving and giving. Can I lead you in this prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your love for me. I choose to open my hands. I open my heart to receive from you provision as well as direction. I make my life available to you as a prophetic act to be your voice to the lives of others. So as you direct me, I will give, I will speak, I'll do whatever you say to be a blessing to the lives of others. Open doors in key moments to touch other lives prophetically with your message from heaven carried by your love in Jesus name Amen Amen Amen, Amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap Thank you, Perry Ann I just believe that there is a release Yeah Wow Money's flowing Someone came and gave money to tap. Someone gave me money to give to Alan Burris to pay his way to the O2 Men's Stakeout while the message was going on. Hallelujah. So here's the altar call. Be led of the Holy Spirit in whatever he tells you to do, not only today, every day. And if you're a first-time guest, we're so glad that you have joined us today. We love to meet you through those double doors to your right. We have an Abbey prayer team that's going to make their way down to the front. And if you would like personal prayer, if you say, I need a word from God today, they would love to pray with you and pray over you. So they're available for prayer today. So we're going to be dismissed and just be led of the Holy Spirit today. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful week.